everyone, welcome back to my channel for another video. I am so excited about today's video. I get to share with you what life was like in the 1960s as a housewife during the Christmas season. And actually this video is in collab with a bunch of other moms here on YouTube. We are doing this really fun series taking you through the decades, decade by decade, each mom is taking a different one. And we are sharing with you what life is like in that time period as a wife during Christmas time. Definitely go check out the links to the other ladies' channels in the description box. Their videos are wonderful. We have put a lot of work into this series and we really hope that you enjoy it. And if you are new here, if you are visiting from the other channels, then I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you enjoy lifestyle and mommy videos, I would love it if you would subscribe. So Christmas time is my favorite time of the year. It is truly the most wonderful time of the year. And the 1960s is a decade that is very close to my heart. My mom and dad were both born during the 1960s, which makes my grandmothers homemakers during that decade. So I was able to interview my mom's mom, my grandma Judy, and ask her what life was like. My mom and I dug through some old home videos and we were able to grab a tape of Christmas time during the 1960s and it showcased a beautiful time capsule of what life was like back then. So I'm going to be drawing upon what I observed from those old movies, the home videos that they took, as well as the research that I've done and the answers that my own grandma gave me when I interviewed her when we were over there at Thanksgiving. So the first category that I wanna share with you is the fashion of the era. It was very cool to see that my grandma was a very stylish young woman. She really was up on the trends of the era and she was very well put together which is really indicative of the era women housewives especially really focused on being neat and tidy and put together and having their clothes well tailored my grandma really was a very classy and poised beautiful woman and so I really loved seeing the style that she had in this era I see a lot of plaid so I went to work finding an outfit that I could incorporate plaid so so this first outfit that I put together is a more casual one, great for a evening in with the family, but still festive enough to be a little bit dressed up compared to everyday wear. So I have this uh, marled rib knit sweater with a Peter Pan collar underneath, this wool blend plaid skirt, which is super cute. And then I also wore this pair of nude slip on loafers, which were really cute. I wanted to really reflect my grandma's personal style. She always did makeup that was really understated just to enhance her natural beauty. I put a little bit of pressed powder on my nose to keep shine at bay. Matte looks were very popular back then. I decided to do a very subtle cut crease with all matte shades just like they would in that era. I kept my brows really natural just following my natural brow line when I filled it in. Cheeks were kept very peachy during that time, sometimes even on the orange side of blush. Liquid and gel eyeliner were very popular at that time, but the lash were the star of the show. Big, bold lashes were really popular on the top and bottom lash line, and so I applied my favorite mascara that would lengthen and volumize at the same time. And then I had a lighter nude lipstick on my lips. I have much longer hair than my grandma ever did, but something that I could recreate that reflected her style and many of the women's styles during that era was the poof or the beehive. My grandma would back comb her hair and tease it up on the top and then pin it all together and there's a very funny story. One night my grandma was getting ready to go out on the town and she was putting her poof together. They called it the poof. And my mom and her sisters secretly were sneaking wooden toothpicks into the teased poof of my grandma's hair. Oh my gosh. Put toothpicks in her hair and she didn't even know it. I didn't even know it went out like that. <laughs> oh my gosh, she had toothpicks in your hair in public? Oh yeah. She came back at the end of the evening after being out for the night only to find that she had toothpicks in her hair and she had had them the entire night without knowing it. So I decided to recreate the poof myself and keep the lower half of my hair down and soft. It's harder than you think to get a poof symmetrical. I really love how this first look turned out. It was very comfortable and chic and it really reminded me a lot of the things that I saw my grandma wearing. The plaid especially was a lot of fun and I definitely would recreate this look again. Maybe not so much with the poof though. For the second outfit and makeup look, I decided to go a little bit more chic and elegant. 
This really reminds me a lot of Audrey Hepburn or Elizabeth Taylor. This look is taken directly from 1967, the year my mom was born. My grandma wore this gorgeous, high collared, sleeveless black dress, and I was able to find one that looked very similar. It was like the perfect little black dress, and she looked so adorable in this outfit. And of course, 1967 is very dear to my heart, so I wanted to recreate the look from the year my mom was born. She was just a little baby at this time. The difference that I made in my makeup for this outfit was to deepen the crease a little bit. I just took a darker shade and made the crease a bit more dramatic and then I instead of the nude color on my lips I added this beautiful vibrant red. I kept the poof on top and I just pinned up the lower part of my hair into a twisted bun and pinned it all down. Of course used a lot of hairspray because we know hairspray was very popular in that era. It was super easy to convert the more casual look into this more chic one and I really love the way this outfit turned out. I can't decide which of these outfits or makeup looks I enjoyed most. Let me know in the comments which one you like the best. So let's move on to the food category and this is actually something that my own grandma helped me out a lot with. She actually had a cookbook that she used in that era and in this cookbook it doesn't just have recipes, it also has tips and um, guidelines for how to host guests and serve and plate food. During the 1960s, entertaining guests was a huge indication of how well a woman could take care of her family and her home. And so it was very important to them to have a well planned out meal. So something that I noticed as I was flipping through the pages of this book was that two different foods in particular kept popping up. The first one was ham. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there's always recipes that include ham to some degree. The other thing that they always had was some sort of jello. And so I decided for this video to make a ham to go along with some other dishes that I put together for our dinner that night. And I also put together some really quick jello. Pretty sure they didn't have Minion brand jello back in the 60s, but that is what we got this time. And I'm going to mix some up. My kids have never tried jello before, so this will be their first test. We'll see what they think. They were fascinated by the fact that this liquid that I was stirring together ended up being this gelatinous, wiggly thing that popped out of the mold and onto the plate. It was jello in all of its glory and they really got a kick out of it. When my grandma married my grandpa, she entered an Italian immigrant family. So she learned a lot of authentic Italian food that was only second generation. The generation previous had come over from Sicily and had brought literally their recipes with them and she read those recipe cards and she still makes Italian food for our Christmases to this day. So to go along with our ham and jello, I prepared an authentic Italian pasta dish recipe and my family loved the entire meal. We served it with a little bit of sparkling cider on the side to make it feel more festive. And from my husband Weston all the way down to my youngest child, my seven month old baby, everyone really enjoyed the meal and it was nice to sit down together and eat a meal and to turn off the TV and to turn off our phones and to just enjoy our time together as a family, breaking bread together and enjoying the season. And speaking of family, this is the third category that I interviewed my grandma on and the third one that I want to share with you today. So family is something that is very important to us. Like I mentioned before, there is a mixed heritage and a lot of different cultures and customs Systems that um, find themselves into the family. But one of the things that I admire the most about my grandma and grandpa during the 1960s was that they were true to their own family and they established their own traditions with their children. So one of the traditions that they always did was before Christmas, they set up their Christmas tree together and this was a family affair. The 1960s brought a new wave of independence and self-sufficiency to the modern family. And this task of setting up the Christmas tree became popular for parents and children children to do rather than it being a chore or task that a house servant would perform. Seeing my grandma as a housewife include her young children in this tree decorating, it really encouraged me to follow suit and to welcome my own little kiddos to participate in this fun family tradition. Another tradition that they did was record these beautiful home videos that we are seeing today. 
The Kodak Super 8 camera became very popular during the 1960s, and I believe this was the era that gave birth to the modern day vloggers such as myself. Especially during the holidays, my grandma would help my grandpa unpack their camera, set up their lights, and splice film. She'd arrange the children to be presentable and smiling while the camera rolled and precious memories were captured. It looks a little different for our family, but we do much the same thing. We set up the camera and we often record special moments in our lives. I feel like my love for taking home videos stems from the example that they set and the work and the money that they put into buying a camera, setting it all up. Now we have these precious videos to look back on and it inspired my mom to purchase a camera the year I was born and to take home videos throughout my entire life. And today here I sit as a vlogger, I started this as a hobby because I love making home videos and now it's become my profession and I truly do believe that it is all thanks to my grandma and grandpa setting that example and taking the time to make these wonderful memories in film form with their family. I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I did making it for you. This was a very special project and I feel very blessed to be included in on this collab. Definitely go check out the other videos in this series. Everyone's doing a different little take on this uh, subject, but I think you will love every single one of these videos. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Merry Christmas and I'll catch you later.